Hey guys, welcome back to T-Bones Tech. In this video, we are going to be comparing the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM lens against the Yongno 50mm f1.8 lens. The Yongno is a new cheaper alternative to the traditional Canon lens and its price comes in at $75, while the price of the original Canon 50mm f1.8 STM lens comes in at around $125. But of course, these prices are always changing, so for current pricing and availability, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to both these lenses on Amazon. They are both prime lenses with their fastest aperture being f1.8 and they both have seven bladed apertures for beautiful looking bokeh. The filter size of the Yongno here is 58 millimeters and the filter size of this Canon lens here is 49 millimeters. So there's actually a pretty big difference as far as filter size go, but they do both share the exact same focal length. On a full frame camera like this Canon 60, the 50 millimeter lens is going to be a great all around focal length. But if you put this 50 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera, it's going to give you the equivalent focal length of 80 millimeters, which is actually great for portraiture. And that's one of the reasons why 50 millimeter lenses are so popular. All the sample pictures and video are shot with the Canon 60, so we're taking advantage of the entire lens. As far as build quality and construction goes, both these lenses are built out of very nice high quality materials, and they also both have all metal backs. The Yongno has this red ring, and it's trying to kind of copy or imitate Canon's L lens series. And it is what it is, it looks kind of nice, but it definitely looks a little bit tacky at the same time. Giving both of these lenses a little bit of shake, the Yongno is going to make a little bit of noise where the Canon's not going to make any noise when shaked at all. That kind of speaks to Canon's quality, it's very nice and premium, and the Yongno is just not quite there. The Yongno unfortunately does not have full time manual focusing, so if you put it in automatic focusing mode, you're not going to be able to twist the focus ring without potentially damaging the motor. You're going to have to first switch to manual focus mode to manual focus. But since the Canon lens here is an STM lens, we have full time manual autofocusing, so that means that if you have the camera lens on autofocus, you can still make fine tune adjustments here by spinning the focus ring. As far as noise when autofocusing, the Yongno can definitely be a little bit loud as it hunts for focus and it's not quite as fast as the Canon is. Now we're going to pop on the Canon and see how loud the Canon lens is. The Canon lens is a little bit loud, but it does have STM focusing, so it's not going to be quite as loud as the Yongno is. It's also pretty fast and snappy, definitely a little bit better than the Yang though. There is a mount to put a lens hood on the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM lens, but unfortunately that mount is not on the Yang though. Both these lenses say that they have a minimum focusing distance of 0.35 meters, but in real world testing, you actually have to step back about another maybe half an inch to an inch with the Yongno, so they're actually not quite the exact same. And that just means you can get closer to your subject with the Canon lens. Both these lenses have a seven bladed aperture, which is going to give us some really nice looking shots. And both these lenses are very sharp, especially when stopped down. But now it's time to get into the fun part where we show sample video and photos. The video that you're watching right now is being recorded with the Canon F1.8 lens. There is no image stabilization, so the video is a little bit shaky, but you can see that the camera is doing a very good job of autofocusing all the different scenes in this video. It takes a little bit longer than normal to focus on this subject. Remember what the subject looks like because now we're going to switch to the Yongno. So here we are with the Yongno and as you can see the autofocusing during video isn't quite as smooth as the STM focusing found on that Canon 50mm lens and it's hunting a little bit more for focus on all these subjects. As you can see this is the troublesome subject that's really hard to pull into focus because it doesn't have a traditional shape to it but eventually the Yongno does pull it into sharp tack focus. This other video clip was also filmed with the Yongno 50mm. Make sure to take a look at the bokeh, the background blur, because we are going to be comparing it to the Canon right now. And here is the same video shot with the Canon. As you can tell, the bokeh is a little bit more round, it's a little bit smoother, and it blends in a little bit nicer than the Yongno does, but they are both very close to each other. These are the last sample videos that I'm going to be showing you. I stopped down the aperture to f5.6 so you can see what the bokeh looks like with the aperture stopped down. And here we can see that the bokeh looks a little bit more heptagonal than it does circular. Now moving on to the Yongno, we can see it begins to look even more heptagonal. And I shot both these videos at f5.6, but you can really see some very sharp corners here in the Yongno, and it's not quite as smooth as the Canon. 
If you are planning on shooting a lot of video with your lens, I would say to pick up the Canon STM lens. It's going to suit your needs a lot better than the Yongno is. Now let's get into the sample pictures. So first off, we're gonna take a look at sharpness and vignetting. The lens used in these first couple pictures was the Yongno lens, and this first picture was shot wide open at f1.8. So let's zoom into the middle here and check the sharpness. As we can see here, it's relatively sharp, but definitely nothing too crazy. Let's stop down our aperture to f2.8 and see if we gain any sharpness. And here at f2.8, we can see a dramatic amount of sharpness over f1.8 here on the Yongno. Now let's take a look at vignetting in the corners. So here we are back to f1.8. We're gonna take a look at these corners. So again, we're going to take a look at the pictures at f1.8. As we can see, they're definitely not too sharp. And we can also see that there's definitely some vignetting. So if we stop it down to f2.8 right now, we can see that the image gets much brighter and also sharper. And the vignetting is definitely very dramatic at f1.8. Again, this is what it looks like at f1.8. And here's what the whole picture looks like at f2.8. As we can see at f2.8, the whole picture is basically the same exposure, where f1.8, just the middle is very bright and the corners are so dark. Now let's zoom into the middle at f2.8 and take a look at the overall sharpness. And it looks relatively sharp. Let's stop it down to f4. And here we can see at f4, we don't gain really too much sharpness at all. Let's take a look at vignetting here in the corners and see if there's a difference between f1.8 and f4 in the corners. And here we can see it does get a little bit brighter here at f4 in the corners, but really there's not a huge difference at f4. So that means that the Yongno is sharpest at f2.8 to f4. And shooting at f4 with this Yongno is going to give us the absolute best results. And here we have the Canon at f1.8. Let's zoom into the middle and see how sharp this picture is. It looks pretty sharp. Uh, let's uh, stop it down to f2.8 and see if the picture gets any sharper. I definitely expect it to. So here's what it looks like at f2.8. And again, we gain a good amount of detail and sharpness here at f2.8 versus f1.8. Now let's take a look at the corners of the picture here. This is at f1.8. As you can see, it's not really sharp and the corners are definitely suffering from some vignetting. Now let's stop it down to f2.8. And as we can see, the corners get much brighter here at f2.8 and the picture gets so much sharper. Again, at f2.8 versus f1.8. Now let's zoom in again at f2.8 and compare the sharpness between 2.8 and f4. So here's f2.8, relatively sharp. And here's f4. And we're really not gaining too much sharpness here at f4 versus f2.8. So basically both these lenses are going to be extremely sharp at f2.8, but at f1.8, both these lenses are still relatively soft and definitely do suffer from vignetting. So let's zoom into the corners one more time and take a look at here at f4 versus f2.8. We can see f4 is definitely still a little bit sharper here in the corners, but there's really not any vignetting at f2.8, so it doesn't make a big difference between f2.8 and f4. So now we are going to compare the Yongno here on the left of the screen and the Canon here on the right. So let's zoom into the middle of the scene and really pixel peep here. Um, as far as overall sharpness goes, it appears that the Canon is just a little bit more sharp than the Yongno. Um, this is definitely a toss up. So if you guys think that one is definitively better than the other, definitely make sure to leave me a comment. I am very interested to know. It appears that we have a little bit more detail here on the Canon on this part of the brick than we do here on the Yangno. Now let's take a look at the corners of these two pictures. And uh, it appears that the Canon is again, just a little bit sharper here. If we take a look at this brick versus this brick. Um, and I would say the Canon's a little bit brighter and doesn't have as much bad vignetting as the Yango does. This looks a little bit darker than this does to my eye, but there's really not a big difference between both of these two pictures. Now let's take a look at both these pictures, stop down to f2.5. We're going to zoom into the middle of the picture here. And again, it's kind of the same story. The Canon is a little bit sharper, but it looks like there's a little bit more saturation here on the Yongno. Now, I think the Yongno actually looks a little bit better because of that more saturation, the, the bricks kind of pop on the screen just a little bit more than they do on the Canon. Now let's take a look at the corners. In here, we can see that the corners are a little bit darker on the Yongno, but I want to say that the Yongno is a little bit sharper right here than it is on the Canon. So both these lenses are definitely very similar. Again, I want to say that this brick right here on the Canon is a little bit sharper than the Yongno. But again, both these lenses are very similar. Now we're going to take a look at both these pictures at F4. And now we have both these pictures here loaded up at F4. We're going to zoom into the middle of the screen. 
and again, I really have a hard time saying that one is better than the other. Both of them are definitely very sharp here at F4. Uh, let's move all the way to the top of this frame and see if we can see some more detail here on this piece of metal. Um, I, I think the cannon may be a little bit sharper. You can see the rust here, just a little bit better here on the cannon than you can the Yangno, but this is just really pixel peeping. I, I really don't know which is better than the other. If I had to bet, I'd probably say, uh, I don't know, I'd probably say the Yangno is a little bit sharper here. Um, it's really just a 50-50 toss up. Let's take a look at the corners. And here we can see the exposure on the corners is basically the same here. And it appears that the Yangno is just a little bit sharper here than the Canon is. Uh, but again, really not a big difference at all. And all of this leads me to my conclusion. If you're on a budget and you're mostly shooting photos, I'd pick up the Yangno. But if you are also planning on shooting a lot of video, definitely pick up the Canon. It's worth that extra money for its enhanced video capabilities. But both these lenses are absolutely fantastic, and I don't think you'd be disappointed in either one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up down below, and of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and then be notified every single time I put a brand new video, just like this one, to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.